When it comes to our practice, is it about change or is it about the client? That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, friend. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in once again to the Badass Agile Podcast. I appreciate you checking this out. You know, I was doing some reading today, scrolling around on the social media, and I saw someone put forward the idea, posit the assertion that, you know what? This isn't about the change that you want to make. This is about what your client wants. You have a customer. Ooh, this one drives me bats. I'm going to tell you why in a minute, but first let's take a moment to remember why we're here. The great and elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. And remember, if this helps you, tell your friends. Now, these days you can find me super active on Clubhouse. I'm at Fuse Chamber, one word, Fuse Chamber. But you can also tune into the Badass Agile Listener Lounge on Facebook to get all the latest updates. Now look, here I think is a fundamental flaw. The sense that we're not entitled to make change in our industry because we're serving a client first. Now, this is super alluring and tempting, isn't it? Because we think logically, well, if I was buying a car and you tried to tell me, no, 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 you don't want the red car, you want the orange car or the metallic P, that's what you really want. Wait a second, I'm the customer, I'll tell you what I want. And you find something that solves my problem or meets my needs. That's your job as the provider. So yeah, exactly who am I to parade around your organization saying I'm an evangelist for change? I'm here to change the way you approach agility, the way you approach your customers, the way you approach your teams, the way you approach your business. Who am I to say? What entitles me? What authority do I have? Now this mindset, my friends is deeply insidious and damaging. How often do we complain about imposter syndrome, about feeling like we don't belong, about feeling like we don't have a place, and yet the minute we gain up the courage to say what we want, to do what we will, we get pushed back by someone saying, oh, hey, slow down, you're rocking the boat. Listen up. You got one life to live. I want you to flip your thinking on this one right now. It's true you will always have a customer. It's true, you must be focused on service. But the mistake, the logical fallacy that everyone's missing in this conversation is that your job is not to please everybody. What you need to do is stand for the change that you want to make. Be the kind of agile practitioner or leader that you most want to be. Decide, for example, that it's upon you to make work more humane for people. Decide that it's upon you to help people self-actualize, become more effective, get the job they want, the salary that they want. Decide that you're going to be the next evolution of agility to make the workplace even better for people who make product every day. Decide that you're going to change the face of leadership and make it more empowering, more just, more exciting. Decide that you're going to make a big bang, a big noise. And then let your ideal customers find you. Actually, scratch that. I don't mean to sit back and wait for them to find you, but I want you to actively engage and pay special attention to the people who get you. The people for whom your resonant frequency rattles their glass, whistles their paper. That's your ideal customer. See, when you do the work that you love for people that love you back, you have found a match. Saying that you should just shut up about change and focus on what your client wants is like saying that you should enter a marriage to please somebody else and to put your needs last. You are passionate about whatever you're passionate about. You're on this earth for a reason. You have something that lights you up. I always say you have an antness. Ants were designed to carry grains of sand and they don't need to be taught. They don't need to be schooled. 
They don't need to apprentice. They do what they do. And I think that's true of all of us. I'm not saying your destiny is determined and set and written in stone, but there are definitely things that excite your soul and you have practiced throughout a lifetime. And those are the things that you're best at. Those are the things that you love most. And remember that you're best equipped to serve the person that you used to be. Everything in your life that's happened before today has brought you to this moment and you're meant to do something great with it. So the idea that you should shut off or stifle that valve is ridiculous to me. If you don't have haters, if you don't have people that dismiss you, if you don't have people that say you're outright wrong, you're not making enough noise. You're not making enough of a mess yet. This world needs shaking up. And as a listener of the Badass Agile podcast, I would hope by now that you know this is what you're meant to do. When you speak about change, when you want to make people better, when you want to make Agile better, if you want to make Scrum better, if you want to make business better, leadership better, teams better, work better, the right clients will find you. And then, yeah, you have to satisfy those clients, but at least they didn't connect with you under the false pretense that you're going to be a good little soldier that marches to somebody else's drumbeat. The truth of the matter is that will guarantee you a job, but it will also guarantee you a boring, unfulfilled life. And it is those kinds of choices that create regret at the end of the day. The things that people say they wish they could do over, the things that people say they wish they had changed or done differently, will almost always revolve around taking your shot, about putting your authentic self out there into the world And never mind what other people think, never mind the rejection, never mind the fear, the temptation to conform, to please others. Nobody gets to the end of their days and asked to have inscribed on their headstone that they conformed, they fit in, and that they upset nobody. Those are not the most noble aims of a true badass. Those are not the behaviors and the hallmarks of a true hero. That's not a life of distinction. Where would we be in this world if Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Abraham Lincoln, or or whoever you admire, Tesla Motors, it doesn't matter. What if they had said, what will make the current majority and the current status quo happy? What will settle the discontent? Those questions are almost never worth answering. In fact, they're barely even worth asking. Be the light. Be the change, be different, and let people who need what you say, what you do, what you stand for, be part of raising you up and enacting the change with you. Never quit, never give up on that. That's the definition of a life well lived, wouldn't you say? I don't know about you, but that's why I'm here. That's why I built this show. That's why I built The Forge. That's what gets me out of bed every day, jumping out of bed. Can't wait to get after it and to come into contact with you, the true believers. So find your own tribe. Don't find clients. This is always the road not taken. But what do we know about the path less traveled, my friends? It's the only one worth taking. That's my diatribe for today, guys. Thank you so much once again for tuning in. You can find me at badassagile.com or reach out on Twitter at badass underscore agile. I look forward to next time. And until then, stay badass. 